We are in line now with Dr. Carol Miyaki, the Medical Director of the Diabetes Management Program at Mid Hudson Regional Hospital in Poughkeepsie. Dr. Miyaki, a pleasure to have you with us. How are you? Thank you for having me. Okay. So we are talking about diabetes, and one of the things that we have noticed and most of the studies agree on that is that uh, it attacks primarily in the United States in a greater proportion the uh, African-American and Latino communities. Yes, um, thank you for that question. Um, in the general population... Um, the incidence of diabetes is 9.3% of adults. Um, in um, Asian Americans, the rate is 9%. In Hispanic Americans, uh, the rate is 12.8%. And African Americans, 13.2%. Uh, so it's a higher rate in people with who are Hispanic in their, in their background. And it also breaks down a little bit differently depending on the specific areas that uh, people come from. In Central and South America, the rate is 8.5%, not so different. 9.3% uh, for Cubans, 13.9% uh, for Mexican Americans, and 14.8% for uh, people from Puerto Rico. So the, the uh, percentage of the population uh, with Diabetes does vary, not just with um, generally with people who are Hispanic, but also depending on their um, background and their um, uh, the country that they that they come from. So that even in in the Hispanic population, there is some variation, and this is due to genetic influences. Uh, it seems to be related to diet and exercise patterns. Okay, so uh, since you're mentioning diet and exercise, uh, I take that uh, following the right kind of diet or a healthy diet and exercising will reduce the risk for diabetes? Yes. Um, diabetes is related to genetic factors and also to ins uh, insulin resistance. So when people can lose weight and exercise, the insulin the insulin resistance, which is part of diabetes, is decreased. So that exercising regularly, uh, maintaining a healthy diet, and losing weight improve the diabetes to lower the blood sugar rate. So in general, um, diet and exercise is helpful for health generally, but especially in diabetes. And diabetes remains a leading cause of blindness, end-stage renal disease, kidney disease, kidney failure, heart attack, and stroke. And controlling diabetes helps to reduce these complications. And what are some of the symptoms that uh, we can pay attention to and if we notice them in us, uh, we, go, we can go to the doctor and ask uh, specifically about them? Yes. If people have uncontrolled diabetes and the blood sugar is running very high, symptoms that you might have are being thirsty constantly, having blurry vision. This is seen when the blood sugar is significantly high. Um, it can also have symptoms of muscle cramping, um, feeling dizzy, feeling generally weak, lethargic. Um, also, poor healing up of small cuts and wounds is another symptom. But it's good to see a health care provider on a regular basis if you have diabetes or if your background is Hispanic or African-American. If your parents have diabetes, if you are overweight, then you should have a test for the blood sugar to make a diagnosis of diabetes. There's also a test called the hemoglobin A1C test which tests the average blood sugar over three months. And this test uh, can be done as another way of diagnosing diabetes. So sometimes uh, the, the blood test, one blood test not, may not make a diagnosis, but if you do two blood tests, then you're more likely to make the diagnosis just on a single blood test. Dr. Carol Miyaki, a medical director of the Diabetes Management Program at Mid-Hudson Regional Hospital in Poughkeepsie, New York, 
Thank you very much for uh, your words and your tips in terms of uh, diabetes prevention. Thank you very much. Okay, great to be with you.